Interesting stories after visits to mig migrant detention facilities. Vice President Mike Pence defending the administration after touring two locations yesterday. That just as Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez unleashing what she saw earlier this month at another facility in Texas. Joining me now to talk about this is Democratic strategist Antoine Seawright, and former C uh, who is a former senior advisor to Hillary Clinton's campaign in South Carolina, and Boston Herald radio host Adriana Cohen, also a nationally syndicated columnist. So Adriana Adriana, let's start with you and those claims by Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez. Are the conditions intentional to some degree, and are they acting as a deterrent? Well, um, that's certainly not what the Trump administration wants. The Trump administration wants everyone treated as, you know, as humanely as possible. But it's it's an enormous crisis. It's, you know, there's only so much uh, resources that are available to handle this massive influx of migrants. And so I'm very happy that Vice President Mike Pence toured, went down to the border on Friday to inspect the conditions firsthand. And I want to highlight that, you know, he invited Senate Democrats and not one would join him to uh, inspect the conditions Adrian, and so I just want to that's quickly, troubling uh, another follow Saturday up here though Adriana not answering the question I just have a question I just want to follow up on that actually do you think it's intentional that was the question <laughs> You, do you, so you're asking me if, if, the, if the Trump administration is making these facilities uh, subpar to deter uh, migrants from coming is that what you're asking yeah that, that's the question yeah no, I don't believe that they are. I mean, I think that the, the, these facilities are, some of them are in good condition. The families that uh, Vice President Pence saw in one of the facilities, the families and the children were treated properly. The, the facilities were clean. They had food. They had snacks. They had hygiene. But in the other facility where men were, it was over, uh, overcrowded and not, uh, it was in a squalid condition, and that needs improvement. But the point is that our Border Patrol is overwhelmed, and this is a problem that's been going on for over six months and Democrats refuse to do anything about it. They refuse to give President Trump and his administration the money that was needed to fix this crisis. And it's only now that they've uh, agreed to this $4.6 billion in supplemental uh, humanitarian uh, crisis, uh, uh, humanitarian funding. So, you know, it's better late than never, but they should have been gotten ahead of this. And instead of denying that there were, it, it was a crisis, they should have helped President Trump six months ago. Uh, Antoine? Uh, uh, Adrian, let, let, let's, let's deal with some fact for a second. The bottom line is what Democrats have consistently said is this is not a crisis enough for Trump to shut down the federal government. There's a way that mature boys and girls who've been serving in the Congress for a very long time and the Oval Office know how to work together to get something done. No one's denied the fact that we have a crisis at the border. It was not a crisis enough to shut down the federal government to get things done. True. The, two, the second thing is you guys have no interest in having a relationship with the truth when it comes to these issues. Look, this was a manufactured response by the vice president to check a box. We know the conditions are tough. I don't always agree with AOC, but when she raised her right hand to testify about the conditions at the border, that's very serious business. She has no reason to lie. And we know from reports, we know from some of the groups that have been posted on Facebook, those conditions in those detention centers are horrible. People are being treated, treated like second class as citizens and the burdens fall on the leadership at the top because the president has no interest in getting anything done because you and I both know Republicans have consistently used this issue as a red meat issue to generate a response and generate some type of excitement out of your base going into an election where you all are on life support. All right, Adrian, I also want to put this to you and get your response. A Washington Post reporter who traveled with the president as part of the pool yesterday described the scene at one of these facilities. He says that the vice president saw nearly 400 men crammed behind cage fences with not enough room for all of them to lie down on the concrete ground. No mats or pillows. And some of the vet men then shouted to the cameras. We have video of that when they noticed the journalists mm -hmm. coming in. And here's that clip. I'm going to play it for you. And earlier we played that clip from the vice president saying he repeatedly said afterwards this is a real crisis and he was criticizing Democrats. So what I want to fully understand from your perspective is was that the main point of his trip or is this really just about combating the Democrats statements about what they're witnessing? 
No, I think he just wanted to go see for himself because there are conflicting reports and there's disparate conditions in different facilities. So he wanted to go see what is going on firsthand. I think it should be a requirement. All members of Congress on both sides of the aisle should be required to go now to the border and see for themselves what is going on. Speak to the men and women, the brave patriots on the ground at ICE and DHS and find out what are their needs, what can Congress do to support them to solve this you know, vast crisis. And I just want to respond to something that Antoine said. You know, it, we wouldn't have overcrowded facilities if Democrats would have given President Trump funding for the wall. You know, if we stopped the influx from coming, we wouldn't have an overflowed over flooded what, what, what detention facility. What we're not going to do is play this game this morning. You and I both know a giving Donald Trump a political reward will not fix the crisis we have at the border. What we do know is that over 60 percent of the American people want comprehensive bipartisan immigration reform. The fact of the matter is you had Democrats and Republicans willing to come to the table to work with this president to do something to fix a long-term problem in this country called immigration and the, and the president wanted to play political football and punt the issue. That's not on Democrats' shoulder. You and I both know that he started his tw he ended his 2016 campaign with the red meat right-wing toned-down rhetoric of immigration and he's kicking off the 2020 campaign the same way. Why? Because it is an issue that consolidates his base and when he is on political life support like he is, he needs something to get him generate a response from his base. Well, as usual, you guys are going to have to agree to disagree. Antoine, uh, thank you for your comments there. Adriana, would you like to have a quick rebuttal to that? No lie, Adriana. <laughs> Go say, ahead. Pre Excuse me, but President Trump's uh, approval rating has, is the highest of his presidency. So he's not Political on life, life support, support whatsoever. No, he's not. 98% of Republican okay. base support the president. <laughs> Political All right, life guys. support. Well, thank you, as usual, for the back and forth and the spirited debate. We appreciate it. Now we're going to talk about President Trump's approval.